a little bit more. One is the definition of commun community, no? Uh, how to define community. <laughs> And um, and uh, and the other one is the is um, much more related with uh, the the Adam uh, intervention on uh, value. You know, if you could uh, elaborate a little bit more about uh, the new metric of the value and how to, I mean, uh, what will be the, the relationship between this new metric and the traditional ways of measure that we have all, uh, until now, for example, money, no? that is the, the classical element that uh, simplify a lot no? the, the relationships uh, and, the, and the how to, to combine and to compare different, different uh, elements of value. No? That's the two questions that uh, I will address to your project or to my project. <laughs> Okay, thank you. And uh, Albert uh, Canigreal is here. Yes, please. Ah, you are not signed up. Okay. I'm Albert Canigreal from Consumo Collaborativo and from Wisher. Uh, again, thank you uh, for all your presentations and congratulations for the project. It's uh, really challenging, all, all, the, all the debates you are opening. Uh, for me, one of especially maybe a question for, for my specifically on, on the governance part. Uh, for some of the projects I'm familiar with, uh, there is, a, um, let's say, the leader, the character of the leader is very important. Uh, in some of the, like Wikipedia or Wikispeed or uh, open source ecology, all these projects have a very charismatic leader. I don't know if that could be addressed also as part of the, as part of the project on one side. So. Maybe because uh, it's not only the governance, but also the people involved in the in the project itself and the character of these people. Uh, and also what Primavera mentioned about the neutrality of the technology. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, because you can remove or add features of in some of these uh, technologies and then you can tweak and or twist a little bit the, the intentions of the system. So I would probably challenge the the assumption that technology is neutral. So maybe elaborate a little bit more on, on this neutrality of the technology. And uh, uh, Javier Creus. Thank you, Marco. Uh, congratulations again. I think you've uh, gathered a lot of interesting visions along this problem, which is very complex. Of course, of course, that we, we, we will see. And uh, wha what I think is we're trying to define something which is, uh, Mayo started that way, a third way of doing things. Mm? But the references we, we measure with mm, are from the old world, are from a world with only two dimensions, public and private. No? And I have this feeling all the time. <coughs> For example, when we talk value, Joan was talking about that, we compare to private value to corporations, but we, we, we don't have a reference for public value, which is the, the other third of the new system, so to say. No, so I'm, I'm, I, I see things like that. Or for example, when we talk centralization, decentralization, we talk about Facebook as centralized, but very many public services are even more centralized than Facebook. No? So I believe it's, it's, it's a, a game of three, and there are commonalities, uh, some of them among the public and the private, they belong to the same system, and we should have uh, ways to develop a, 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 a view on that. And after that, I've been studying the differences between markets and platforms for a while, and my, my division criteria, which might be useful or not, is consists on the number of roads in a market the user can adopt to go, like Airbnb, either you rent a home, or you offer a home, that's what you can do. While in a platform, you, have, you may have any, many roads, such as Bitcoin, you can produce it, you can use it, you can exchange it, you can gather it, you have many more roads. <laughs> and the second difference is where is trust uh, based? In markets, trust, Airbnb may provide some trust, but trust is among peers. If I rent your apartment, Marco, I want to know everything about you and your apartment. 
and that's a basic pillar of uh, trust, while in a platform, most of the times, trust is funded on the rules of the system, not so much on the people, but if we look at B Bitcoin, or we look at G B GitHub, at uh, platforms that allow collaborative co uh, creation, many times trust is basically the put on the rules. Thank you. And uh, Enric Senabre is here. Enric? Ah, here. Hello, I'm uh, Enric from, from Goteo, the, the platform for, co for collective funding of, of common goods. And I'm uh, having a, a couple of questions. I also think this is a very challenging uh, project, and, and I especially uh, find interesting this connection between uh, the, the theory, the mapping, and, and, and the apply this into, into a resource, into something that has value for, for communities. Uh, and these two questions are one related to, to what Mayo explained. Uh, in order to, to map these 300 projects, no? you talked about the, the, well, the criteria for, for the imitation and, and things such as the community attributes. And, and I would also like to, to know a little bit more about uh, how many of them have you already uh, detected or what's going to be more or less the, the, the geographical and, and thematic uh, um, uh, reach of of these three, 300 examples. And related to this, uh, I'm also, uh, I also find very interesting, as I said, the, the connection to, to building something. And, and, and I have uh, also this question for Summer, if you can um, give a little bit more details about will, how will this affect the design uh, and, the, and the building of, of, of a tool? No? How I, I think that, that this, is, this is one of, of, of the very, from my point of view, very interesting things about the project. No? This, um, uh, sustainability uh, uh, determined and, 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 and being the main criteria for building something that, that people will use and communities will use because there's uh, enough data uh, and, and, yeah, and, and discussion I understand as well about uh, the characteristics of these projects and, and the value they have in, in, the, in the common base uh, per production model. So basically also uh, as a leader, for example, if there is going to be open data for, for these cases or, or in the mapping or afterwards uh, through all the data that this can platform can, can gather or aspire to gather. So these are more or less the, the, two, the two issues or questions. Yeah, I, concerning the first question, I, when, when we stop uh, this first round, I would ask uh, Ruben Martinez to intervene so we can also give the floor to Ruben that is one of the other people that is engaged uh, in this project and uh, from here, from Barcelona, from the EgopNet group. And um, we have also Nuria Alabao. Is, it, is Nuria here? Yes. Uh, do you need, uh, if you need translation, we can translate it uh, if you prefer. Eh? You, can sp you can speak Spanish and we translate uh, for the people that Eh, bueno, para mí es una oportunidad estar aquí y estoy como ansiosa por escuchar vuestras conclusiones de la investigación. She's, she's very happy to be here. <laughs> ¿No? Y nada, la primera pregunta está relacionada con la que ha hecho Joan Suberats, de hecho me la ha quitado, ¿no? Que es eh, cómo definís comunidad. Y pienso que esta definición de comunidad está relacionada con los criterios de, de valor que se establecen dentro de la comunidad. O sea, quien establece el sistema de, re de reciprocidad es la propia comunidad. Por eso son importantes eh, pensar cómo se establecen esos límites de qué es comunidad o quién está dentro de esa comunidad y quién no. Yeah. Um, she wanted to do actually the same question that uh, Joan did about uh, what is the community, and particularly um, a way of addressing it is how the community members themselves define who is part of the community, if I understood. And, and how do they value uh, contributions to community? Claro, este sistema de reciprocidad, eh, cómo se establece el valor, no necesariamente es un valor económico, evidentemente. Puede ser, por ejemplo, trabajo por respeto en, en el intercambio. Y en ese sentido sería importante introducir las nociones de valor de Bordier, creo, porque... ¿Valor de? De Bordier. Eh, Bordier. Bueno. ¿La Bordier? Bordier. Jean Bordier. Ah, Bordier. 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 Bord
por ejemplo, en ese sentido y respecto... Bueno, me traduzco. Sí, que um, de an, an, to analyze the systems of uh, exchange in these formats and how value in the exchange has been uh, valuable by the community and perhaps a way of uh, approach it would be useful to take uh, Bordier uh, uh, concepts of uh, value. Porque en ese sentido el capital simbólico normalmente siempre tiene algún tipo de traducción en capital económico. Uh, in this sense, like the symbolic uh, capital also tend to be uh, uh, result into economical capital. Y bueno, en respecto a, en ese sentido, pienso que las comunidades dirigidas por corporaciones tienen que tener eh, un, un claro, una clara diferencia a las que no están, a las peer-to-peer. -peer And the, there is a very clear uh, difference, there should be a very clear differentiation between the, the, the corporate uh, uh, based peer production that are uh, lead or provided by corporations and the ones that are uh, community based. Uh, or, or common base that they are not uh, they should be distinguished. Y la segunda pregunta sería si todas las comunidades que se investigan son se forman después de la de la creación de la herramienta digital o si vais a investigar algún tipo de comunidad que sea preexistente a la propia herramienta digital. Uh, we are going to investigate uh, not only communities that adopt a technology that is there, but also the ones who uh, uh, the technology is developed later on. If it was like this, the question. Yeah. Um, okay, thank you. I. I would leave uh, the possibility to have uh, first reactions and then we reopen the, again the, the floor. Okay, who would like to, to start? Hmm? By Adam. Okay. <coughs> All right, thank you, Marco. Um, <coughs> yeah, um, I'd like to address this question about um, money and metrics, but also about community, just very briefly. Um, um, it's, community is a word that's very often used, right? Uh, particularly in English, and particularly in American English, uh, people use community very much uh, because Americans are very nostalgic for community. So everything becomes a community, right? There's a, um, <coughs> there's a gay community in the United States, for example. And if you think about the term community, community implicates <coughs> people who know each other I mean, or at least people who interact on a frequent basis and develop strong social bonds. Now, all gay people in the United States don't know each other and don't interact on an everyday basis and definitely don't have social bonds. So that's a misuse of the term community. Right? Um, there are a lot of internet communities around where people interact on a daily basis and get to know each other and develop solidarity with each other. But there's also a lot of formations on the internet that are not communities. Right? Facebook is definitely not a community, for example. Um, the Debian operating system with 11,000 uh, contributors is probably not a community. Mm, it's probably something else. Maybe it's a public. Public is looser formation than a community. It's people who don't know each other but still think that they have something in common. Right? Uh, there are also crowds. There are lots of different concepts that you can use. I think it's important to be careful about community and how you use it and give it a strong empirical definition. When we work with this Center for Digital Ethnography that we have at the University of Milano, we have a empirical operationalization of community. If you do a network analysis and you see there's a lots of crisscrossing, tight crisscrossing within nodes, then you have a community. If you don't have that, but you have a dispersed network of people who don't really interact with each other, then it's not a community, it's something else. So that's also a term I think that's important to take seriously. Um, the question of Money and, and, and metrics is really interesting and, and very difficult, right? Uh, because, uh, and we shouldn't go on for too long, but um, met value metrics and money are not the same thing, although they're intimately connected. Right? Um, I think right now the, uh, there's actually no uh, metric for, no, there's no established metric for 
value created in common space pair production, even if you do the wide sort of term of it that I do. There's a number of contenders to this. There's a number of individual companies and startups and um, other actors who are launching their metrics and are trying to make those metrics become the norm, right? Clout was quite, quite successful a year ago to establish clout as a measure for reputation and influence. Seems to be a bit declining right now. Um, there are a number of other actors within the online advertising market, for example, there's a number of different metrics around that aim to establish themselves as the default metric for uh, establishing the reputational value of a particular site or person or node, etc. Facebook has its edge rank, etc., etc. Um, but there's nothing really established, which is an interesting situation because that means that there's a space for intervention on the part of politically engaged academics like ourselves because then we can have a, an exploit in a sense where we can suggest things. And the question also about how to sort of define such a metric becomes politically very, very relevant. Uh, in a sense, it's a situation that's quite parallel to the, um, the 18th century. If, if you look at the, um, sort of the main established metric of value in the modern industrial forest societies was some version of the labor theory of value. Uh, the idea was that time spent in industrial production was worth money, whilst time spent outside of industrial production, like in household work, was not, right? So you got a pension on the basis of your time spent in, in, in the factory, but not on the time spent at home, etc. And there was a number of those distinctions. Um, that's a notion of value that has a very long history. It was inscribed within the Fordist welfare state through a series of struggles in the late 19th century, early 20th century, and maybe just after the Second World War, it became a dominant principle for the organization of welfare states. Um, it was theoretically defined sometime in the 18th century. People before Adam Smith or Christopher Wren exactly in the 1730s actually had no clue about how value was produced in the emerging manufacturing economy. Uh, it became sort of theoretically established by these political economists in the mid-1700s. Um, and it became sort of inscribed in the political agenda and politicized by the labor movement in the second half of the 19th century. So the establishment of a value metric is actually a, a process that takes a lot of time and involves a lot of struggles and conflicts, etc. And I think to some extent we're at the start of a similar process right now, that is, the opening up of a series of struggles and conflicts about how to define a value metric for immaterial production, common space peer production, whatever we want to call it, right? That can reflect its, its actual importance within the information economy. The relationship between metrics and money, maybe we can take at the <coughs> bar afterwards because otherwise I'll just go on for forever. Then. Okay, thank you. My Unless right. you want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to combine the question of Joan in my answer. Where uh, I'm going to combine uh, the question of Joan about uh, what is a community with the question of Al Albert referring how this community actually governs themselves. What it emerges, which type of community emerges from the point of view of how they <coughs> govern themselves. So first, I want to say that in the analysis of uh, uh, Eleonora Ostrom about the uh, natural commons. One of the characteristics of the of the governance of the um, of the communities that were able to sustain the resource over time, one of its characteristics is that they were able to define very clear boundaries about who was part of the community and who was not. And these very clear boundaries that was an element of uh, sustainability or success in in natural commons is actually the opposite or I would say it's not present in the case of uh, digital commons. In the sense of, in the digital commons, what we find is that uh, generally there is this principle of openness in which it's very clear to establish which, where are the, the borders or who is part of it or who is not. Actually, if we analyze how is the distribution of participation in this community, we, we, we f actually the, the empirical work that has been done in this direction uh, f from communities even previous to the internet to, to the ones being investigated now, uh, there is this repetitive uh, feature by which there is a very, very, very strong uh, inequality in the distribution of the participation. 
So in this, uh, uh, in the communities around digital commons, we have 90% uh, of the people who, who use the resource or who is there, who is lur uh, acting like lur lurkers, but are not actually contributing. Uh, but they are very important also for the process uh, because at like an, uh, an audience and give it uh, value and, and it generate a network effect. Then there is a 9% that contribute only uh, sporadically or uh, uh, only uh, uh, make few contributions, what it's called like the weak links, weak, weak, weak links that or uh, a weak participation that is also very relevant because uh, uh, it helped to connect the, the community with uh, very big uh, networks of, or very big field of uh, knowledge. And there is a 1% of, of, the, of the participants in the communities that actually develop the large part of the content. So what we have is a very strong uh, concentration of the, of the content creation and a very uh, descent, uh, very unequal distribution of participation. Uh, still, if we only focus about with in this one percent of the people who actually have a very strong commitment, we don't understand the process. The process is like ecosystemic. Without this one percent of strong contributors, together with the nine percent of weak contributors and the ninety percent of audience, it's how it works. Like it has the combination of the effects of how uh, how these different uh, profiles uh, um, incorporating to the process that it happens. Only with the one percent it would not work without the ninety percent of people who don't contribute because it, it increases the motivation to to be there, like to post something or to contribute in a place that there is no one. Uh, uh, there are less motivation than to go into a place that there is uh, uh, many people around. So. This is the, the first kind of uh, challenging when thinking about community is that it's, they are very unequal communities in terms of the distribution of the of the of the injectment. There are also very very much um, one of the characteristics is that they allow a very large diversity of contributions. You can contribute in many ways. Uh, you can decide, and the contributors have uh, autonomy to decide if they want to contribute in content or if they want to contribute in technical uh, uh, resolving bugs or if they want to contribute uh, uh, organizing events. I mean, it's, it's very plural, kind of. It's like a, a participation as an ecosystem in, in the sense of there are a very diff diverse uh, ways in which uh, people can decide to contribute. And there is not a centralization of the planification. There is no one deciding distributing the work. They are their own uh, participants who self-assign their, their task. The second challenging element about thinking these processes as communities is that they are very decentralized. So al also the empirical elements about uh, the distribution of, of the distrib of participation in the flows is that as the, co or, in, or in Wikipedia, as the communities grow, they tend to split into groups. So the logic is not, uh, we are together, uh, like being together in the sense of, in a united way, in, 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 like in the, with the image of the assembly in which we are all together. It's a way of being together in a fragmented way, in the sense of these communities has very few spaces in which centralize or call to the whole community. It's more likely, it's more like there are many subgroups that uh, are actually quite small uh, uh, that uh, interact between them. This also allowed direct participation because in, a small, in many small groups, the people who is contributed to the small group can actually participate. And so this is the way in which these communities solve the element of the scalability. They are able to scale because they fragment, creating a, a framework that integrates the fragmented uh, groups into a, a common uh, a space. And um, the third uh, element that also challenges thinking about communities, uh, about these uh, processes as communities, is that actually the, the, that is related to the way in which are governed, is that actually these communities, uh, there is not, there is very few direct interaction between people. It's more that the, the participant interact with the environment. You go to a place, you see what you can do, or, or you, you, you decide to go here, or, 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 see, or, or, or see what others have done, and you decide what to do. But you don't talk, to, I mean, there are direct communication in the sense of communicating with others in order to see uh, where to contribute or not, or what to do. But mainly it's a, an interaction with a, an environment in which you see 
element of this, they are very transparent, allow this way of enjambment. And, and this is a very important uh, element because when Albert was questioning that actually technology is neutral, it's actually, I also question it in the sense of the technical design of the platform very much contributes to govern the process in the sense of depending on how uh, technically the platform allow you to do or not to do or where, where you can interact or, or, or where you can communicate, uh, the community uh, uh, govern itself or, or, or take a different shape. Uh, regarding the, the actually when thinking about the governance of these processes, uh, most of the previous analysis has only been focused into one element, like how these communities decided policies or decided administrators or, or things like this. But actually, we, we try to integrate all the elements that uh, govern the process in the sense of all the aspects that contribute to the control, to give direction and are sources of power uh, of, of, the, of these kind of communities, we end up, up into a very co complex ecosystem. It's very, diff it's very complex system of uh, governance, in which uh, here I, I, I'm not going to explain it, but uh, actually we, we identified eight, uh, or I identified in, in my work on the governance of digital commons, eight elements that are sources of power and that actually contribute to the governance of the process. And one element is this one, is the design of the architecture. As uh, Lawrence Lessig said, code is law, in the sense of depending on how the, the platform is in design, uh, uh, the, 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 the process get a direction or, or the distribution of the power is uh, happening in one way or another. And this is why uh, uh, efforts like uh, CUNE uh, and the platforms that we are going trying to release are so important because they are trying to make that the, the points of govern, govern that concentrate the power and, the gov and, and, and govern the process are more uh, in the hands of the people who is contributing and generating value instead of uh, uh, the possibility that this value is being captured by the ones who control actually the technology, which is a, a key part of, of it. Um, with regards to technology is neutral, I think there is some distinction that has to be made between uh, the design of the technology, which obviously is not neutral, and in fact that's kind of what the whole peer-to-peer -peer value project is about, is how shall we actually design this platform in order to promote certain values as opposed to others. But the, the question of the neutrality of technology being neutral is uh, once the technology has been designed, so for instance, if we want to design a technology that will try and promote anonymity or freedom of expression, then this piece of uh, software, then it can be used in many different ways. And uh, if we manage to design a technology that actually goes uh, managed so well to protect anonymity, then of course it is, it, it is gonna be really useful and really valuable for many users. But at the same time, it can be used for purposes that we were not necessarily the one we were, that the technology was conceived for. So, for instance, uh, freedom of expression can as well, a technology that actually endorses freedom of expression can be used for hate speech or for like communicating things that are theoretically uh, not legitimate. At the same time, if we protect anonymity, then the technology can be used for criminal activity because the user know that they don't, that, that there is no way for uh, the authorities to find them. So, for instance, Tor could be a good example. Tor is designed and uh, is conceived and the, the goal of the technology was to actually allow people to express themselves in an anonymous way and to, be, to stay away from surveillance. Now, the problem is that, of course, uh, the technology can be used for anything. So because it protects so well the, the anonymity of users, it also protects criminal activities that rely on the same technology. So I think it's important to distinguish the design of the technology, which definitely has, um, um, which promotes certain values as opposed to other. But then once the technology has been designed, anyone can use it and the use of the technology we cannot really foresee in advance. We cannot, we cannot preclude a technology designed for something to be used for something different. Okay, thank you. Samer? Concerning the questions of uh, Enrique the about the, um, 
how the, um, their work <laughs> will influence the platform design. Well, uh, the, the, the platform it aims to promote sustainability of common risk reproduction um, communities. And I said macro, uh, from the macro and micro approach, right? So if th the idea is that the social research will find which factors in many issues, will which factors promote stability, productivity in, in the macro approach, right? Uh, some factors will be related to governance, other will be, others will be related to legal issues, and others will be technical. Like which technical features the platform would, uh, uh, if the platform has these technical features, this would promote this or this, or this would disincentivize this or that. So the idea is, okay, we will uh, receive uh, requirements of the such ideal platform <laughs> that would compile these fantastic factors that would promote productivity, reliance, uh, resilience, sustainability of communities, and we will see what are uh, implementable or not in CUNE, and we will try to implement those, and we'll, it will guide the platform design in this way. Concerning the mac micro approach, um, more related to actually knowing what's value and how do we measure this value, we will find value metrics and value rewards linked to these metrics, so we can incentivize contributors to contribute. And these value metrics and value rewards can be also implemented because in the end can, I mean, depends on which metric or reward we're talking about, they, they could be an algorithm, so they could be implemented. And we would see which are implementable and which would be implemented in the platform. Concerning the uh, availability of open data, uh, well, concern, uh, the CBPP directory, of course, it, it would be open data, I get. But um, concerning the, um, Afterwards, the gathered data of the, of the real community's activities, which, I mean, this is the famous big data that we have, so we can exploit and do data mining and do profiling or whatever. So we should be very aw privacy aware of this data and not just publish it as open data because it's not really, it's not our data, it's the users, right? So, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, we have pending also Ruben, Ruben Martinez. So we, we, we also introduce a new protagonist of the research. Uh, I think I have to answer the, the question of Enric first, okay? Yes, 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 of course. Okay. I'm so sorry sense. because I was on the <laughs> toilet and I met a journalist of TV and it was so embarrassing, but okay, I think that the answer was about uh, the, uh, how we want to do the, the mapping of that experience. Yeah. Uh, um, that's also my, my question, but uh, no, I, we are doing that, but it's so difficult because the, the first challenge is how you can do a mapping without uh, having a very close definition of what you are trying to put on this archive. And then the first challenge is that you don't have to be deductive, you don't have to have a closer definition and, and then go to the file, but you have to be inductive, the file, the cases of the file, the actions, the platforms, the common basic reproduction platforms have to talk to that definition. But also you have to do a database. That, w that it means if you have to do a database being deductive, the solution is that you, have, you are changing all the time the database. But, and this is a challenge, no, the practical challenge, and the uh, conceptual challenge is uh, what type of categories are you putting on that uh, archive. And we are managing four types of uh, taxonomies or typifications or typologies of, of uh, to, to, to try to define and also to explain that cases. One of them is, is very intuitive, it's like the type of the activity. You know, it's, uh, it has to be an activity like open, open data commons or flows or um, um, collective writing or that kind of tax. The other one, the other typification that is related with the commons, they said, is the type of, collabor uh, the, the type of collaboration of that case. It means uh, if this type of collaboration is digital based or is digital supported, like Mayo uh, introduced in, in his uh, aportation, in his talk, and 
if it's uh, digital data, it is uh, it works like an album. It's accumulation of apportations of different users or, or prosumers or, or commoners, no digital commoners. If uh, it's digital data, but it's not like an album. No, no, it's not an accumulation, but it's like a collage. It, uh, there's interaction between the users, like uh, Wikipedia or that kind of of, of uses. Or if it's the uh, type of collaboration that is digital based, but is uh, more like an exchange, like co-housing or that uh, kind of, of collaboration, that you have a, a central digital space, but what you are really uh, changing or what you are really uh, uh, making uh, a, a, a collaboration between two or three or a community of users is a commodity. It's not only a... And then we have the... Uh, uh, in this typification, the, the type of collaboration, the non-based, no, su the digital supported collaboration. That could be like, you know, a uh, wiki speed where you have the digital supported, but what you are doing is a, is a resort, a physical resort, or that kind of uh, collaboration. And this, this typology, we, we call it the most important type of collaboration because what we find really is, is that in all the cases, you, you, what you really are, are seeing is that there's a lot of types of collaboration. Here we have Efrain that is related with the project Gifinet, and if we try to understand uh, the type of collaboration, so Gifinet, you have a lot of types of collaboration. Digital based, digital supported, collage, album, and what we try to see is the most important uh, type of collaboration. And then other, other uh, taxonomies like uh, the type of license or, you know, more intuitive type of, of taxonomies or the, uh, what type of common resource is producing that community. It's a design, it's a methodology, it's an internet protocol, it's a resource. Uh, uh, can we uh, find brands that could work like a commons? It's the brand of Wikipedia, Drupal, uh, etc., uh, a commons. What we are finding, as you as you may imagine, it is like the the, the most type of common resource that is produced is uh, a resource, a design, or a methodology. No, and well, very briefly, or, or maybe not <laughs> briefly, but uh, in few minutes, it's what we are trying to do with that kind of of taxonomies. And as I say at the beginning, trying to to understand and to change uh, our definition, our framework, or parts of, of our framework uh, while we are doing that type of, of uh, analysis of cases. That it's really, I think, what needs uh, uh, research like this. You have to be dynamic and you have to let talk the cases and the practice and, no, and not have a very close definition because it really is not operative. It, it don't work. Okay, thank you. And uh, so now I would leave again uh, the possibility to in other interventions. It's free. I would uh, encourage encourage everybody to participate, uh, included uh, the the other friends or that are here from other groups. For example, people from. Uh, uh, the University of Surrey uh, or uh, from the Peer to Peer Foundation. We even have uh, a friend, uh, Kartik, that came from India to participate uh, in this project and we interrupted his uh, meditation <laughs> uh, stage in, in, in India, so he is very fresh and uh, can give a lot of interesting uh, contribution to our work. But everybody is invited. I see also many other friends uh, from Barcelona that are very, very expert, like Water, Hélène, uh, uh, Pep, uh, and so on. So please, <coughs> uh, let's uh, uh, get your contribution. You can stand uh, the end if you like to intervene. While, while you think and uh, when you decide to intervene, I would make a question that is uh, concerning the value, no? That is a question that I, I find uh, challenging. As uh, we said in, in different moments, 
this is really <coughs> difficult to address any kind of issue uh, without uh, getting involved in uh, many ambivalences. There isn't uh, a sort of uh, uh, easy, easy way out from the challenges we are facing, no? For example, privacy was saying, no, now Primavera anonymity, no, et cetera, et cetera. And that is also true concerning value because from one side it's very interesting, the possibility to reframe what is value, how we measure value, from the other side, uh, I often reflect about the challenges and the risks that can be implied in uh, importing into this new mode of production, uh, understanding and uh, conceptions which are very much uh, uh, dependent on the uh, dominant approach to value included uh, the same uh, willing to measure value and to measure individual contributions to measure to to value production no? so this is a an issue that i often uh, uh, reflect about uh, how 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 far is correct in terms of uh, capacity of uh, uh, giving account of these modes of production and in terms of political consequences that can come from this attempt to apply value metrics to these new forms of uh, production. That I would like to listen also other to, uh, to think about. Okay. Ah, there is uh, first uh, Juan and, and then Ellen. Okay. okay. Uh, please, uh, each one uh, introduces uh, himself or herself. Okay. I am Juan Pavón from Universidad Complutense in Madrid. And one of the things I like of this project is that we are very multidisciplinary. We have succeeded to put together people from sociology, from economy, legally, uh, computer scientists, and so on. So it's very enriching for all of us. Uh, in the presentation of Summer on CUNE, we have seen that it's interesting to have this kind of platform and Mayo has realized that, 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 okay, having the platform by yourself is some way to get some independence for the community. So to give you, if you want more freedom, to organize as you want and for your governance and so on. Okay, but uh, in the presentation of Summer, it seems that, well, we, he has shown that uh, decentralization is a necessary condition but our experience now realize that it's not sufficient condition. We need more things, and this is something that we want to learn from this project. Uh, which are the requirements for such kind of platform so we can um, provide the means for a community to be successful, okay? Uh, so this is what we are going to do in the project, to, to implement different mechanisms for reputation management, privacy, uh, many things, okay? But uh, at the end, one question that I realize is, okay, we have the platform, uh, this can empower communities, we can allow communities to install, to set up easily, and the idea is that they need to configure that platform. But which kind of configuration we provide to the community in order to be successful? Okay, because communities, as we have seen, there are many different kinds of models of common-based peer-to-peer production uh, with many different needs, uh, with many different uh, organizations. Some ones, as some people have mentioned before, uh, are driven by some person who leads the community and in some way impose some way of working and so on. But sometimes we might consider also that these uh, norms that govern the community emerge from the community, so we want to start from some more relaxed model and then to, to grow up, no? So, from my point of view, okay, we can implement those mechanisms and so on, but when we are going to start a new community project, which is the best uh, configuration of these tools that we have to provide, no? This is something that happens.
Uh, I'm Hélène Finidori uh, of uh, Commons Abundance uh, Network. Uh, I have a few uh, s questions, uh, different. Uh, one is uh, uh, close to what you were saying, uh, Marco, about uh, uh, measuring value and contributions. Uh, how far are you going to go towards an accounting system of uh, value flows uh, within and between different communities? Uh, is this something that you're going to, uh, uh, that you are, is part of the project or is it uh, beyond uh, the project? Also, um, what Adam uh, was saying about 70% of the value, even within the corporate world, made, I mean, taken from the commons, would this uh, uh, value uh, measurement uh, or accounting system uh, enable uh, activists, for example, to calculate what type of value uh, corporations are extracting from the commons, uh, for example? Uh, so that was the first series of questions on, on, on value and on, on uh, metrics or the counting. Uh, the other one is the scope of the, of the project in terms of communities. Um, I understand it's very digital based. Uh, are you also going to look into actual production of physical products uh, via 3D printing? Uh, uh, wiki speed Arduino type uh, or things like that, sensorica, uh, etc. Thank you. There is a question over there. And then water. Hello. Uh, I'm Tony Blanco. I'm a PhD candidate at the Autonomous University of Madrid and uh, and I'm a member of uh, the Global Revol Revolution Research Network of the Open University of Catalonia. I'm very excited with the project. I'm very excited with the possibilities of all this. I just have to point out that and I find very problematic <laughs> the two concepts of the name of the project, the peer-to-peer -peer and the value. Uh, I think that it's very optimistic and very to think that people in this community consider themselves as, as peers. Uh, uh, some of them do, does. I mean, they, uh, Mayo just said that there are a lot of inequalities in the contribution, so uh, I don't think they are, con and, and computers are the peers, and they are peer to peer, but not, I don't think people are considered peers themselves. And, <coughs> and as an autonomous members of these communities, let's say that, uh, Probably they are autonomous, let's say, let's be optimistic as well. They're autonomous in that community, but out of that community, they live in, you know, they have an environment where they are probably not autonomous. And uh, there are a lot of things about these people, like uh, they may have different access to resources, they ha may have disabilities, they, there are a lot of things involved there that may maybe hide with this peer-to-peer -peer perspective. Uh, the other thing is the value. Uh, some people have pointed that out, but I want to stress that uh, what I find also problematic is that how common, and it happens with, it, it happened when, uh, how exchange value hides value, uh, uh, ex um, use value, right? Like, let me put me in a, an example. Uh, if we take, Reputation, I think it's going to happen the same thing. Reputation, uh, at the end, the, the big reputation of Messi as a football player is as high as the big reputation of uh, Salman as a, uh, as a um, free software leader. You know what I mean? We are comparing reputation uh, so sometimes, and <coughs> I think that's the good direction, right? Uh, well, yeah, I think that I, this is pretty much what I wanted to say. Thank you. My name is uh, Wouter, uh, amongst other things, uh, co-founder of the Free Knowledge Institute. Congratulations, of course, with the project. Um, very interesting and challenging indeed. 
And I wanted to bring forward the distinction between use value and exchange value. Typically, the commons resources, uh, commons community projects generate uh, use value, and it's, uh, well, in many cases, um, not sufficient to survive as a human being to only participate in uh, your uh, community uh, commons uh, based uh, project. Uh, so, as uh, uh, Adam mentioned, uh, the reputation economy, you earn a certain reputation by participating and contributing in your commons. Um, and that is something that we can exchange in the market. So that gives us a certain excha exchange value, right? But then there's a the problem again. Then we are uh, again in the market. Well, not necessarily a problem, but um, I was wondering if you have a view on how a more holistic or integral uh, approach would look like uh, or um, ideas in that direction uh, of um, participating in different commons projects that would lead to the value that human beings need to survive. And that would, I think, uh, uh, I would link that to what Helene mentioned about uh, the value accounting system, because that ultimately uh, could help us uh, lead to in that direction. Uh, okay, we, we give short uh, answers and then we come back to the people. There is already David that, that is inscribed. Okay. No, I just wanted to intervene. I mean, there's a lot of talk here about <coughs> value and the problematics around value and um, and so on. I mean, and of course, as you said, there's a difference between use and exchange value, right? Uh, and then the question is, do you really want to translate use value into exchange value? Wouldn't it be better just to leave use value as just use value without rendering it exchangeable? Well, um, and that's, of course, um, possible if you have the sort of Benklerian perspective, because then you would say that uh, you'll just have all these different uh, networks or communities of commons-based peer production and they'll all just do their own thing and we don't really have to compare apples and carrots. We don't have to compare productivity in the Debian software system with productivity in an um, wiki speed system uh, because we can just leave them to themselves because there's no need to regulate them or no need to really think about um, politically institutionalizing them in any way, right? But as soon as we want to think about how can this economy be regulated, politicized, compared to a corporate economy, as you indicated, you know, how long do you want to problematize what share of this common space peer production is actually contributing to corporate profits, how much should corporations be taxed in order to pay back, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, as long as we want to, to think about commons-based peer production as some sort of integrated political movement and not just a multitude of sort of manifestations of diverse things, we need to be able to compare apples and pears, right? And the only way to be able apples and pears is to translate use value into exchange value. And yes, it's a terribly alienating and uh, horribly dehumanizing process, but it's politically necessary, I think, if you want to uh, reinforce the political position of this. And just a quick remark to what you said. Um, exchange value doesn't necessarily imply markets. It has done historically to a large extent. But planning economies operate with exchange value as well. Right? So that when the uh, Soviets tried to uh, decide how many sewing machines vis-a-vis -vis how many garden chairs to produce, they operated with some sort of exchange value. And so did the Chilean attempts under Pinochet to create a computerized cybernetic planning economy, etc. I'm not saying that we're going to have a planning economy because that requires a global state that can do the planning, which we don't really have. Uh, but we might not want a market either. But the interesting thing is maybe to think about maybe something else, right? Maybe exchange value can, in, in the case of common space peer production, can be institutionalized in some sort of economic form that is neither market nor state or both market and state or something like that. Thanks. Okay. 
Uh, summer, primavera, would you like to say anything? Just about the, um, uh, replying to Juan um, hi that highlighted the um, importance of the configuration of the different nodes. Well, of course, this uh, w we cannot provide a single, I mean, we will provide a general platform for all communities, but each platform, uh, sorry, each community is free to customize or adapt their own node. I mean, it can be just graphically or it can be some other tweaks, but of course, uh, this will be done once when installing their own node, and this is part of the the sweet things of decentralization, right? So, yes, that's the other one. Mayo? Um, I want to reply to several of the, of the questions. The first is regarding that um, someone has found to uh, how to interpret the, the unequal distribution of the participation, the element of there is this very strong 1% that is uh, contributing a lot, but also that uh, if, you, if we analyze the distribution of the, um, of the visibility uh, of the <coughs> members inside of the community, there is also a strong uh, um, centralization, a uh, strong inequality in the distribution. In this sense, I think sometimes there, there has, initially there has been the tendency to interpret the element of having this, uh, it's called it power law, this one, one nine ninety percent distribution of the attention or the distribution of the participation, which is very common to this format. How do we interpret it? Uh, this, uh, do, how are going to conceive this, for example, per communities as democratic if they are so much in unequal in the distribution of participation or in the distribution of their attention? And I think uh, the, there is, it, it, I think it's a, it's a mistake to, to interpret the democratic char uh, character of the power law only because it's present. I think it's uh, more than uh, uh, interpret because if it's present, uh, it should be how actually what the communities do about it. And if you go more into analyzing actually the practices around the power uh, law, you see that there are communities which actually uh, uh, build upon the power law as a system to actually uh, democratize access to visibility. And, uh, and so they have practices, for example, of the more visible uh, accounts are collective instead of only individual. If you analyze, uh, for example, the distribution of the, of the participation around the controversy on, on SOPA or the 15M, uh, for example, if you analyze uh, how the, part, the, the, the um, uh, distribution of, um, of uh, visibility uh, in, co in, in these processes. I am going now beyond common-based reproduction to also peer-to-peer -peer mobilizing, let's say, it in this way. Uh, uh, you also see that over time, actually, there is a lot of ro uh, rotation about who, uh, who actually is visible. So you see, like, that in the beginning of SOPA controversy, the more visible accounts are very different to the ones who, uh, uh, one year later, and the same with the 15M. So there are several practices by which the, these communities uh, actually distribute the visibility that concentrate the power law. And so uh, if you go more into uh, de uh, detail, you, 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 you see ki these kind of elements. And and I want to say this because previously it was in the question of Nuria, she was pointed about the importance of the distinction between corporate-based peer production with common-based peer production. And I think sometimes we put too much attention into the element through our language or, 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 so or conception, too much attention into the for-profit kind of element. And I think we also need to uh, um, see into the question of the concentration not only of the for profitability or the money, but the concentration of reputation or an audience. And in this sense, uh, to, to, to differentiate the communities which are also more, uh, have practices that distribute more uh, resources like reputation or attention. Because at, uh, these communities, 
uh, are characterized because they are very few, th there is very f uh, few exchange that is happening through mercantile exchange. There is very few money going on in the interaction in the community. Uh, later on is the, in the infrastructure provider, there can, there can be something else, but in the interaction in the community, there is very few activity that is happening through mercantile exchange. But this doesn't mean that there is not uh, uh, exchange. And this doesn't mean that there are other uh, sources of value, as we have said, like reputation or like audience. And there are communities which actually are more distributed, distribute more uh, uh, than, than, than others. Uh, like, so there, uh, in this sense, like, not only uh, like characterize the communities about how do they use the profitability, but also how do they they distribute the other uh, uh, resources like reputation or audience. And um, I, I coming back to the question of, of Nuria in the sense of how important is like still to differentiate between corporate and, and commons, uh, uh, I think this project is going to contribute in two ways. One is uh, through the element of defining criteria of uh, delimitization like in the sense of distinguishing typologies of, uh, of uh, uh, common-based reproduction and also uh, defining the elements that would characterize cases that would not be common-based reproduction. And here we have, like, for example, Airbnb. Could we conceive Airbnb as common-based reproduction or not? Could we conceive it only as market innovation? Because there is not a common resource, because uh, uh, the, the, the autonomy of the participants, as uh, uh, Javier was pointed, is very limited. They are, can only do one thing, and, and there is not a decentralization of, of the conception and execution of the, of the agenda of the process. So, so the first element is to provide in some uh, criteria for the limitation about what could be considered common-based peer production and what is like market innovation, even if how difficult this is. And the second element contribution is through providing a platform, a technological platform that tries to overcome uh, the, the, centralis the, the problems of, of power dynamics in, in, in centralized uh, uh, architecture, technological in architectures through a platform that is uh, decentralized. 